Hello and welcome to Eat Your Backyard. It's a windy one out here. Oh, something like heaven. It's about 78 degrees and breezy. Blue skies. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel where I talk about all kinds of edible things. If you're interested in getting your abundance stream kick-started or maybe making it even better, well then this is the place for you. Today we're going to talk about one of my most favorite things, and that is Moringa Tree. Moringa Tree is an amazing ancient tree, and I've got many examples of it throughout my yard. One of the things I like to do when I plant things is plant them all over the place and use different techniques. So I plant them in the shade, I plant them in the sun, I plant them where it's dry, I plant them where it's wet, I plant them all over the place. And by the way, you might have noticed I have a band-aid on my nose. You ever wonder why? Well, it's because I was hit in the face with a 10-foot surfboard today, but it was worth it. to first talk about all the properties of the beautiful Moringa tree, ranging from its fruit, the way it grows, what you need to do to grow it, how it's commonly used, its origins, and then we'll plant some Moringa. I'll show you how to get your own Moringa started, both from seeds and from a cutting. All right, let's get started. And by the way, please subscribe to Eat Your Backyard. This is a community. I live stream every weekend or try to. I also release longer form content like this. So if you like that kind of thing, you're interested in starting your own self-reliant food system in your yard, well, I think you should subscribe. Now, before I turn the camera around, I want to show exactly just how tall this Moringa is in less than a year of growing. This is about nine months of growing, but I'll stand next to it. I am five foot 11. And look at this Moringa tree. Yeah, that's serious growth. And you know what? You don't have to let it keep growing. Really, the process is to trim it down and generate lots of new shoes. You almost treat it like a vegetable. In some areas, it can be a little bit aggressive in the way that it grows. Here, on the very northern end of 10A, we're in the perfect spot to grow that Moringa. I think it's really rewarding to grow just because it grows so fast and the product that it produces gives you a lot of feedback. It gives you a lot of nutrients back and it also gives you a lot of growth, which I think is kind of rewarding, especially in an area like this where it's a bit hard to grow things. Moringa oleifera fancy name. This is a fast growing tree. You could say that it's drought tolerant. It comes from India in terms of its heritage. It's usually cultivated for its young seeds, also its leaves. It's used as a vegetable and uh, also herbal medicine. At the end of this video we're going to talk about some of the herbal applications for this particular beautiful specimen. And look at this Moringa right here. You see that? It, it, these are two I grew very close together. And I'm so happy with the progress. Interesting thing is that its origins, the word itself, Moringa, actually means twisted pot. And that is pointing to its young fruit, which is widely eaten. You might have heard people referring to this as a drumstick tree or a horseradish tree. But, uh, you know, I just call it a Moringa. And the bark is more of a whitish color. And you can see that is evident down here at the part of this tree that has formed bark already, already. And now the bark up higher is not there yet. It's still green. It will produce beautiful clusters of yellowish white flowers. It's kind of like these drooping flower clusters. And it tends to get really leggy in its growth. It's best to think of this as a heavily trimmed tree right from the get-go. 
Now the flowering begins really in the first six months after planting, which shows you how old this is. No flowering yet. It's about, I'd say it's about six months old, so I'm expecting the flowering to come any minute now. Of course, flowers mean fruit and fruit means happiness, so the Moringa is a winner. Six months to production, six months to meeting the permaculture principle, which I love so much, which is realize a yield, get a yield. Now in commercial cultivation, they cut this sucker back three to six feet every year and then it's allowed to regrow so the pods and leaves are within arm's reach. You don't want this to get tall, although many people tend to do that because it's growing so tall, but so quickly, but that's not what you want to allow. This is a plant you wanna work with, a tree you wanna work with and guide in its growth habit. So if you want to grow Moringa outside, you're going to wanna be in hardiness zones nine through 10, tolerates a wide range of soils, but it's gonna prefer something more acidic. So. You know, this is perfect where I've got it here. This is a wet, sandy, loamy soil. Uh, we don't want it in a very wet environment because this tree will rot. It's brittle enough, but it'll rot in a heavily uh, saturated soil situation. So you want it to be able to dry out. So you can find this thing growing all throughout South Asia, Southeast Asia sold there, uh, Philippines, Indonesia, places like that. And you'll, we'll talk about some of the dishes that they make using this, which are quite delicious. Uh, but it's also growing wild and it's cultivated across Central America, the Caribbean, all over the world really in the climate zones where it's capable of growing. You can certainly expect a heavy yield from the Moringa tree. When you see these larger mature specimens of this tree, they are just loaded with both fruit and leaves, which again, you wanna harvest on an annual basis, at least cut it way back. This plant is grown through seeds and through cuttings, both quite easily. Now, typically people will take a, a one meter cutting in length. That's a three foot cutting practically. Now that's pretty big and that's the kind of cutting we're gonna to take today. In case you're wondering how many fruit you can get from a Moringa tree, well, when it's grown from cuttings, the first harvest can take place in six to eight months. However, the fruits aren't produced in the first year and the yield is generally lower in the first few years. By year two, it produces around 300 pods. By year three, around 400 to 500 pods. A good tree can yield 1,000 or more pods. In India, a hectare can produce 31 tons of pods per year. Now, when we start talking about how much nutrients this thing possesses, I think you're going to be uh, surprised when you consider how much of it we can produce quite easily. And often the flowers appear twice a year, so you're getting that double bang of fruit production. It's really just cranking out the fruit all the time once it gets going, again, just got to manage it. The leaves as well, in addition to the fruit, are just always coming in. And, you know, average yields of six tons can be achieved for that hectare that I just talked about, of just leaves. And of course, it likes to have the leaves trimmed back. Uh, in terms of the yield of oil from those kernels, from the seeds, well, that is used as a base for cosmetics and for hair and skin. So the uses of this tree are really just amazing. In terms of pests, Resistance to those pests and diseases is high. You're not going to have many problems. And you can see on these trees, you know, some of the leaves will turn yellow and fall off. That's just the Moringa tree doing its thing, basically, from the bottom up. It kind of manages itself, but I've never seen it get any kind of pest or disease. And, um, you know, it can get that powdery mildew you might be familiar with, but I wouldn't let that stop you one bit. Just plant a bunch, and if one gets it, well, you got more in the shoot. Now I want to take a moment to just look at the nutrition specs I got on the both the leaves and on the fruit of the Moringa. Now on the leaf, this is just the raw leaf and it's 100 grams of the leaf, which I don't think is a lot, but if you were to consume 100 grams, I guess this is what you get. Look at all those vitamins that you get. 92% of your vitamin B6 62% of your vitamin C, riboflavin, B2, B1, just loaded. And in addition, look at all the minerals, 31% of your iron, 
19% calcium, 41% magnesium. This is incredible. It even has zinc in it. So that's the leaves. Now you can eat those a number of ways through teas, just eat them raw, etc. They are, They do have kind of an intense flavor to be eaten raw, but look at this. They're an intense nutrition. Look at the pods. These are the, these are the fruit. Again, mind blowing quantities. Look at the vitamin C in the fruit. 170% of your vitamin C in just 100 grams. Now a little lower on the minerals perhaps, but there is no denying this is a powerhouse of nutrition. I'm going to dub it the multivitamin of food forest trees. So the drumstick fruit itself is widely consumed in South Asia, of course, and prepared by parboiling it actually. And then they cook it in curry until it's soft. And then those fruits are delicious and just packed with vitamin C. It's a source of fiber and all kinds of minerals, so wow, what a great treat. Now, in addition, you could just remove the seeds from the mature pods and eat them like peas or roast, and roast them like nuts. There, there's really a number of ways to consume the delicious fruit. You might suspect this tree has been used to combat malnutrition and they have uh, really used it as a versatile food source throughout a lot of different places in the world and that is great because in addition you can use it to purify water. Look at this moringa blowing in the wind and this just gives you an idea of exactly how brittle and how flexible this tree is. This is a younger tree and I planted a bunch of others around the base that I had growing in pots so they're just getting started but doing quite well. Now look at this one that I recently, a squirrel actually jumped off of it and broke it. But I recently topped it off, and this is within five days. It's growing these shoots back. This one's going to be a nice bushy moringa. You know, I'm going to leave some of them so that they give fruit. Probably not these because they're in a little bit more of a shady location. Again, over the long term, we're going to be able to realize the fruit production in increasing quantities. What you want to get good at, though, with the fruit and with the leaves is drying them, preserving them, storing them, because this is a resource of nutrients you and your family can eat for a long period of time. So store that energy. It's another permaculture principle. And you can do that through dehydrating the leaves, certainly, and then you can make teas with them, you can eat them, you can sprinkle it in things to, to eat and get that nutrition value. And then the nuts, of course, you could just store them in jars after you dry them or uh, any number of ways. But really the key here is to get good at, at storing this really nutrient dense commodity that you can generate in your yard. So what are some of the health benefits of Moringa, you might ask? Well, there sure are a laundry list of claims as to what the health benefits of Moringa are. While we're walking around to look at some other Moringas I planted all around my yard, you can see there even is one right here. This one is not doing that well, <laughs> dropped most of its leaves. But I'm gonna to top it off and it's gonna spring right back. So that's just one of the places. I put that in an incredibly dry area. That's why it's not doing so well. Do you like Buddha Belly Bamboo? I have lots of videos about it on the channel. Go check it out if you get a chance. Also, I hope you will subscribe and like this video. Let's look at some more Moringa I planted on this edge space. This was just a sandy patch on the side of my yard here. And I have rejuvenated it by, well, first of all, watering it, but second of all, applying bunny manure. And you can see it's just an experimentation zone. I think it's fun to have areas like this. This is a couple of seeds that I planted recently, and they are sprouting up, but you can see, hanging in there, easy enough to grow. I just jammed them into the sand. They love the soil I have here. This one was our strongest tree and it was completely snapped over and I think actually chewed on a little bit. So I'm gonna chalk this up to squirrel damage. I think squirrels won on this one, but really they didn't because as soon as I chopped it off here, many sprouts appeared. And this is roughly two weeks growth. But it's also making me think maybe it's a good idea to start to generate the bushiness and sacrifice the fruiting in order to get much more production out of these things. So I wondered, what are the health benefits of the Moringa? And well, there are so many that are claimed on WebMD, or at least referenced on WebMD. It's been used for diabetes, inflammation, 
bacterial, viral, fungal infections, joint pain, heart health, cancer. <laughs> wow. And you know what? That's not hard to believe, is it? Is that hard to believe? When it's got all those minerals in it, I mean, it's just like fertilizer. You know, I'm giving my yard the fertilizer it needs to look like this. You know, keep in mind, grass enthusiasts, I don't care what my grass looks like. <laughs> Just as long as it's green enough that Jack and I can throw the football. But not only the minerals. I mean, we talked about the minerals, the vitamins, that amazing quantities and concentrations in just 100 grams of, of material. But also antioxidants, of course, vitamin C, etc. Fills that category. Uh, here's some other things they use it for. Rheumatoid arthritis. They take the leaf extract and uh, they claim it, it helps. Diabetes. They say it has insulin-like proteins in Moringa. How weird is that? Cancer. So they took leaf extracts and it showed the growth of pancreatic cancer cells. Uh, it helped decrease them, I guess, in chemotherapy. So, holy moly. Now, none of this stuff is a replacement for going to see an actual doctor. But isn't it curious that a plant so high in nutrients produces so much benefit? And I think that really the idea is that when you get the right nutrients into your body, you're going to feel better. Now, in my little food forest, I now have eggs that are super high, high nutrient eggs because of the way I feed the hens. And I have super high nutrient plants like moringa and pigeon pea, which are super high in protein. Pigeon pea is super high in protein coming in. This is in the course of a year I've generated this level of abundance. Moringa is a key cornerstone plant in this any scheme in this area. If the Moringa will help with a number of other things. Cholesterol, arthritis, high blood pressure, liver damage with medicine, stomach ulcers, asthma, wound healing, ulcerative colitis, diarrhea, anemia, and weight loss. So you might wonder, is it okay? Well, according to WebMD, they say it's generally okay to eat the leaves and the young seed pods. Leaf extracts made from the powder and the water may also be safe, but they do caution. It can be dangerous to eat the bark and or the pulp. The interesting things for me was that it has been touted with lowering blood pressure and they even say so much so that if you're taking low blood pressure medicine to be careful because you know this this can lower it as well and you can lower it too much i suppose uh, diabetes medication same kind of idea uh, what you're doing i think essentially with with uh, eating moringa is just Okay, now I looked up an article on Medical News Today, which I thought was really interesting about all the benefits of Moringa, and they list a whole list of them. So I'm just gonna run through them and you might find them interesting and look into them further on your own. So what are the benefits? Okay, one benefit is protecting and nourishing the skin and hair. Isn't that interesting? It protects the hair against free radicals, keeps it clean and healthy. It also contains protein and it protects the skin cells from damage. Quite interesting, you like rub Moringa in your hair. Treating edema, edema's painful condition, Moringa might help it. Protecting the liver, some indication it may protect the liver. Preventing and treating cancer, it contains properties that help prevent cancer from developing, which is quite interesting. Treating stomach complaints, and this would be due to its antibacterial, antifungal, antimicrobial properties. And uh, they even say they use extracts to combat infections caused by salmonella, which is pretty intense. They claim to make your bones healthier. Now that makes sense. All these claims kind of make sense in the backdrop of the nutrient quantity and densities that you're achieving. Calcium, potassium, magnesium, all the things for bone health. Treating mood disorders, depression, anxiety, and fatigue. Of course it makes sense if you have all the nutrition that you need, you would be in a better mental affect. So, Wow, that sounds great. I had the same effect with eggs. The, the nutrient infusion into my life made me feel so much better in every way. Now, protecting against 
protecting the cardiovascular system is another big claim of Moringa, uh, claim to prevent damage and maintain a healthy heart. And then helping wounds to heal, are you? helping wounds to heal and reduce the appearance of scars. That's a pretty impressive one, I would say. I've got lots of scars. I've got this big Band-Aid on my nose. Huh, maybe I ought to rub some Moringa on it. No joke. You could make a poultice and just apply it to. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put some moringa on my longboard injured nose. Okay, back to the video. Treating diabetes. Wow, it helps reduce the amount of glucose in the blood, as well as sugar and protein in urine. Hmm. Okay, treating asthma reduces the severity of some asthma attacks and, and bronchial constrictions. Protecting against kidney disorders. Improving eye health, improving the properties because of its high antioxidant qualities and levels. Treating anemia and sickle cell disease it might help a person to absorb more iron and therefore their blood cell count. So this is amazing. Did you see how easy it is to grow? Well, maybe you haven't because I haven't shown you yet, but I'm gonna show you now. Let's go ahead and plant some Moringa. Okay, so here we are in the Zen Bunny Run. It's actually beginning to rain a little bit. I hope we can do this, but here are a bunch of moringas I got from a neighbor's tree, friend's tree. And uh, these seeds, by the way, this is what you get. You get about maybe this many from one moringa fruit. I think these all came from the same fruit. They've got this papery substance on them that surrounds them. And you really just want to take your thumbnail and uh, crack the fruit. I'll show you. i got to put the camera down. Okay, this really is a two-handed job, but what I do is I just run my finger in and catch it and then open it up. Look at that. Good compost. And there it is. Now, you don't need to take the shell all the way off, but I always do. Just give it, set it free. That's really all you have to do to increase your likelihood of sprouting these guys. Now, you just repeat this process until you get those seeds and they're ready they look good actually and you can tell they're good because when you press on them they're firm all right i'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest hey penelope you making new bunny manure for those moringa trees i hope so now it's about to rain and that is perfect i love to plant stuff right before it rains or while it's raining maybe it's just superstition wow look at that strawberry tree blowing in the wind these are west winds. This is what happens after, that's the ocean that way. This is what happens after a cold front passes through. We get these west winds. And these trees are not used to that. They have not experienced that this summer at all. Now this is where I want to plant these seeds. And here's how much I believe in them. Just put it in, there. this is set it and forget it. And I'm hoping those chickens don't get to it because if they get these little sprouts, they will eat them. But I really just want to have a bunch of them growing around here. And that's it. That's the whole process. I'll water them or the planet will water them here through this little rainstorm. Now let's go ahead and take a cutting. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. Now I've got to say, I feel a certain emotional connection to my first Moringa trees that are doing the best out of all of them over time. But it is time to take a cutting. I could let them grow taller, but why would I? Why would I? It's time to get them bushy. All right, let's take a cutting. Now you want about a three foot cutting, but it doesn't hurt to go a little longer than that. Let's see here. I really think I wanna to go to about the three foot on the tree itself, so. But I'd like to leave a little bit of that woodiness on the cutting. I think that's gonna help ensure its success. Yeah, I think I'll cut it right about there. Now, if you want to support the channel, just use the Amazon links anytime you go to Amazon, which are in the description of all the Eat Your Backyard videos. And that is like donating to Eat Your Backyard. It doesn't cost you anything extra on Amazon. All right, let's take this cutting. I'm going to stick in a three foot range, just like the guidance says. I like to go far enough down that it's close to where it's woody, but that's not that important. Just keep in mind, it's going to sprout you know, all throughout. So you don't want to go too high. You really do want to stubble it. And 
she goes. I love these Corona cutters. I'll leave a link in the description to these, but these are my preferred. They're a little more expensive. They're sharp and reliable though. All right. It's not a bad cutting, folks. Not bad at all. All right, let's remove the excess leaves. There you go, that's a nice cutting. I'm gonna remove some of the leaves just so we don't have so much leaf energy. All right, now, we don't really need to over complicate this. I've got a mix of mostly sand, a little bit of potting soil in this pot right here. You see, I got this Dracaena cutting that's kind of wilting over it, but that doesn't bother us. I'm gonna plant this right in the middle. All right, I don't put it all the way down to the bottom of the pot, but most of the way down. And now that I look at it, it does look a little bit leafy. I think I'm gonna trim it back just a bit. And the reason is, first of all, we don't want it blowing over. I really don't. That's why I do that. Let's see if it, that's better. Yeah, I don't want it blowing over. That is for certain. Now, even if this stuff just falls in the ground, it is excellent chop and drop. All those nutrients go back into the plants as well. And that looks about right. Okay, now we have a nice manicured cutting. I'm gonna go ahead and water that down so that it can start growing. The water wand. It's a must-have. We're just gonna water it in. Oh, that cutting just looks like it's gonna be so successful. I always like using this water wand to erode the soil where it's a little hilly in the pot. But I really wanna give it a good soaking. This is what's going to guarantee that it grows. Look at that. Easy. Leveled up. See how you can change your new tree into a new new tree. <laughs> so thanks for watching Each Backyard. I hope this will inspire you to grow moringa trees of your own in your yard. And I hope you will subscribe and join me. Thanks for watching. Eat your backyard. Uh-oh. I appreciate it.